it says. <laughs> so Mark, we're, we're going around all the venues that ICW has played so far. Mm -hmm. And we're kicking off here with the very, the birthplace of ICW. What can you tell us about it? Um, this is the Mary Hill Community Centre Hall, also known as the ICW Arena. There is two halls that we've run, there is a small hall down the hall, uh, corridor. But this is the place we started, this is the, right. the main hall called the Reed Hall. Uh, AKA the ICW Arena. Do me a favour, my young son, listen to old man Kyle. My wife is a slut She stole all my money And now I'm depressed Jeremy Kyle made her confess After she failed the pregnancy test Do you trust her? My wife is a mess Do you feel me printed my full name and address? But what did my friends do? They just took the piss They don't pull us out Serious all this is Tell me what they think Tell me what to do Cause I'm a nobody compared to someone like you Tell me what to do, what to do in my life Because Jeremy Kyle always be Fucking my way Do you mind tell my wife so I live in hell After your show I've been taking it well And it's all going swell if I truly confess Because Jeremy Kyle has been fucking all right. Did you think this is the place? This is the place I want to kick it off. Oh, I 100 percent. Like I, I, to this day, I love this venue um, because of the layout out of it. Like these older, stellar venues don't really exist that much anymore. So um, for a for a live crowd, like there's not a bad seating house with the, the raised seating and all that sort of thing. Um, obviously, it's needing some touch-ups with lighting and and stuff like that. But like in terms of like a venue, it's aye, this place is amazing, mate. I love this place. So. So how would uh, like the very first show? How how would you set this out then? How would this set this out? Where would the ring go? Right in the middle. Right in the middle. That was it. First show was just a wee desk uh, over there with a PA on it, uh, a wee amplifier. That was all we had for a sound system. Lights were just the house lights. Cameras uh, set up there uh, at the top of those stairs, and the wrestling ring set up in the middle. Where would you be? Would I would be show? over at the desk, and then the majority of the crowd would all sit here. So even though there wasn't really big crowds to start with, whenever we did have crowds, it would usually be over these seats here, so you could see absolutely everything that was happening. I don't need to get me where no, I was. No, but I was left myself. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm here now. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. It's a disgrace. Light troops flying everywhere. Some wee girl. Somebody get hit by a light tube. Some wee girl's face can clean off. Glass just came slice, clean oh off. God, man. The promoter took a screw me out of money. I just looked at him, I just looked at him and went, what? They just they gave me more money, actually gave me more money than I deserve. Seriously, Charles, I don't ever want to go back to ICW again. It's, it's the toilet pan of wrestling. Where did you have the first conversation about ICW happening? Um, <laughs> the first conversations would have probably been online a uh, red lightning uh, on MSN chat <laughs> on MSN chat or something like that saying it wasn't called ICW obviously 
and, and he'd be saying he was going to run a company and I was going to be a wrestler and it worked out the other way. That's really weird, I've never thought about that before, but he was going to be a promoter, I was going to wrestle, I was already training at the time. I knew as soon as I started training that I wanted to be a promoter, but I didn't know like what sort of company I wanted to promote or that sort of thing. Um, and then it started becoming very clear that I wanted to promote a company like ECW, like the Attitude Era, because that's why I was at wrestling training, because of those sort of shows. And um, that's when I started thinking about ICW. And ICW was literally just me sitting in my house one day, think the Hunters of different names that were kind of like extreme. <laughs> what were some of the ones you didn't use? I can't even remember, but they were awful. They would have been pure awful. They were all like, what, like I try to think of words, like bodacious. <laughs> bodacious championship wrestling. <laughs> bodacious championship wrestling. That would never have worked. But um, it was words like that. I was just trying to think of what's a word for extreme or mental or crazy. Words like that. Yeah. Crazy championship wrestling, mental championship wrestling. And then insane, and then it's just the way it just stuck. I was like insane, and no matter the mere names I thought of, it kept going back to that. And I was going, that's actually a really good name. At first, people went insane championship wrestling. It's a pure rip off a uh, ECW, pure rip off a XPW. So uh, that's how it came about. I'm glad I stuck with it because at one point when we came back, I thought about changing the name to Glasgow uh, Championship Wrestling, and it was my mate Roy. Uh, who I went out drinking with one night, I actually said, you can't do that. This was in 2010 when it was coming back. Yeah. It's like, because I was just going to run it in Merry Hill, in here. And uh, he said, you can't do that, it needs to be called Insane Championship Wrestling. So, thank fuck, I uh, listened to him instead of calling it Glasgow Championship Wrestling. Alan Brogan, I heard what you had to say about Drew Galloway, and I heard that you're going to have to start from the bottom rung and work your way back to the top. Fuck! Close that door and keep it closed for five minutes. Uh, I've done 20! <laughs> Cunts are actually going, Will's Drew, and I went, hey, he's doing a promo, and then I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Just quickly, I mean, you started running ICW originally, it was in this room? It was in here. In this very room. What happened with ICW version 1, we'll call it? Um, the first show had. I think it was 13 matches on it, 12, something like that. Ridiculous amount of matches for a card. Everybody I knew was on it, and the rope broke in the first match, which was Damien Diamond versus Mike Musso, and it was a dog collar match. So they, for some reason, went to the international or something, like crisscross each other, bounce off the ropes, one ducks, another one, and fuck it, it just <laughs> didn't work. Because uh, you're wearing a dog collar, so that's a really Disney work. And then bounced off the ropes and um, the rope broke, the tap rope pinged off. This is the very first match in ICW history. It was an abomination, an absolute abomination in a match. Sam Storm behind that curtain going, oh no, feeling really ill, like really, really ill, like a pure fear, an impending sense of doom. You ever done a CPR training? You ever been, <laughs> you know what I mean? When they say that impending sense of doom, that's why I go, I was like, oh no, man. So I ran that show. Not as many people sh showed up as I thought, because obviously I thought, oh, I'll put a poster up, people show up. Um, but it started a decent crowd, n n looking back. The first show was like 73 people or something. And um, I just, oh, it was, it was bad. So that, that happened, and then out next was Carl Conroy versus Someday. And then there was a match where I cut one of my mates that were, um, had like um, light tubes and stuff. So one of the light chips went out of the crowd, so there was another promoter in the crowd, he walked out in disgust at that point. This is match three, so we're three matches into this crowd, right? And match four, there's some big wrestler from Newcastle versus some wrestler from here. So they've all told this wrestler from Newcastle to not fuck at him, without telling me. This, this show was outrageous, right? <laughs> so he gets smashed, right, in this next match. Fuck's sake, like... It was, it was, it was in a match context, it wasn't yeah. like he got assaulted or anything. But it was very stiff, and you're like, for fuck's sake, that was, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'd had like, severely reprimanded somebody for that in the future, but I didn't even know what was going on. Remember back, I'm like 20 or whatever, or 19, do you know what I mean? And um, there's no like, strong role models in terms of promoters around us at the time, they help us, and if there, is, if there was, they weren't wanting to fucking help me. And then it's the main event, 
uh, which is meant to be a, a triple threat match. Drew, Grogan um, and Darkseid for the belt. Uh, Drew wins two pinfalls to one, a 30 minute iron man match that probably went like fucking <laughs> 17 minutes or something. <laughs> 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 so right after that show, uh, what, what's your first thought? Like that was rings. awful. That was awful. Um, you I, think I'm, that's it. I'm done. No, no, no. I thought I'd run another one. We were out in the street. We were on a main road. Kids were out the main road. Cars swelled and fussy stalling. Next drinking. I just slammed in the shutter at cross cars. I put the shop board out, shout the ball at me for nearly getting through the shop windy. No chance. The second one was so bad and it was in at Christmas time like two weeks before Christmas and um, like there was an old firm game that day say like we're playing Rangers fuck me man like 40 people showed up there was no light and I couldn't afford this and that it was fucking awful um, and then you'd think I'd quit there but then I went down the next day and I was like look can I run an hour man but this time I'll run it in a couple of months so February fuck it wasn't actually that long what was I thinking? I'm going out there right now to the middle of this ring. If I don't have a fucking opponent in five minutes, there's going to be hell to pay. ICW and everyone else here has not seen or heard the last of Lionheart. Huh? Mark my words. But this time I went and got posters printed up. Like A4, like crap, in uni or college. Uni, I've not been uni. College. <laughs> fucking Annie's Land College or something. Fucking just using the printer and just abusing your student card man and just fucking printing like a big stack of flyers at that time. Putting them all over the, all over the campus and going to different colleges, like Stowe College that I wasn't even part of, pretending that I went there. Fucking just putting hundreds of uh, flyers and posters up. Like, we've got our best crowd ever. I mean, the show was called Serious Assault. And it was a really good show. I, I don't know, like, maybe I'd learned for the first two shows a wee bit. So I was like, right, I'll book less matches, I'll maybe no book these guys because they're shite. <laughs> and I'll maybe book these guys because they're a bit better. And that's your guys like Wolfgang Red Lightning. Um, Kid Fight, Liam Thompson, Grange, I won Grange, um, Darkseid, Drew, Grogan, like that, the, the, the ones that were better, you know what I mean? Yeah. The other ones kind of fell by the wayside. Um, and we put on this really entertaining show that had like, I was walking in Costco getting all the stuff for the, the to sell at the interval. So some guy goes, wheel of cheese, and I'm like, all right, cool, three pound a wheel of cheese. So we put that under the ring, and we've got a dildo. This is our first ever storyline, right? So I'm like, boys, please let me do this storyline. And it's Sarah and all, like, thank God Sarah let us do this. I was like, Sarah, please trust me. So I'm like, um, we'll have it be Sarah's birthday, and he's got a present for her. So I've had to go away to a, a shop in the barras to buy a dildo. So I'm in perusing the dildos, and some guy's like, coming here, so there's other one behind the show up there at Till laughing, the guy comes there, hey, what are you looking for? Oh, there's no point lying, man, like, I'm looking for a dildo, mate, like clearly I'm looking for a dildo, I'm looking at all the dildos, mate, all different dildos, there's like a pure menagerie of dildos in front of me, I'm clearly not looking for the sports section, I fucking... See, see when you go to wrestling, did Aye. you ever think... <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't, but mate, see some of the conversations, like yesterday I was sitting on the roof of my office, just uh, <laughs> looking up, how much should we cost for a violin player? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't have to take so many takes up on my life. <laughs> Damn you, Grogan, you're not. <laughs> you just got <laughs> Alan Grogan, I heard what you had to say. And before Drew Galloway jumps on into the show with a bevy of beauties. <laughs> I'm in a rush. So then I've got my dildo and all that. <laughs> I'm like, waving them about because I wanted for comic effect. A uh, big rubber one that waved a bit. Because like, if somebody's wielding this big dildo and swinging it about, it can't be a big solid one. It needs to be like. <laughs> it needs to be able to swing it about. So then I did, she goes, he goes, I've got Sarah a present. And the geezer, the, the present, he turns around and goes, That's the kind of generous guy I am. He's challenging Drew for the belt later that night. But as he does that and looks the other way, she opens it and pulls out a dildo. So she's like, What the fuck is this? And he's like, this isn't the present that I, I got her. So then um, Drew and Darkseid run it and attack him um, with the dildo. So I think it was the world, world's first ever dildo clothesline. That was exactly right. So they bounce him off the ropes. Darkseid flies up there and hits him with this dildo across the face. <laughs> it was amazing, right? And the wheel of cheese, I thought, oh, she could get hit in the face with a wheel of cheese. So what heart is that wheel of cheese? But we hadn't taken into account that that's a really cold concrete floor and it's been sitting there for about six hours. 
So she got hit after her. So she drew picks her up like he's got a kisser, and she's out on her feet. Is that thinks she's gone in for a kiss? <laughs> and he hits her with a cheese. It sounded like a gun going off. Right. <laughs> And we all went, we were all behind the curtain over there. So everybody's watching, going, oh. But all the boys were popping like crazy, going nuts because we hadn't done anything like this before. I was like, this is the sort of thing I want to do. But in that moment, I was like, as weird as that sounds, and I go involved in a dildo and a wheel of cheese. <laughs> I was like, that's what I want to do. How's that? Does that make I just love you sound really bad? But I was like, I was like, that's, that's in a weird way. No, no just the wrestling, I was like, I want things like that to happen, because seeing that moment, the whole crowd went, oh, what is happening here? This is mental. This is video evidence we've gang that Charles Bonington is in the building, and that spells trouble for you. Wolfgang, you fooled me once, and you tried to fool me again. My mobile phone call this morning. Oh, you've got another event to go to. It's £100,000 in the stake. Rubbish. I'm here tonight in Mayor Hill. And one reason, Wolfgang, I'm here. For you. You got us last time. You got us last time, but this time, we're the winners. We're on the money. Come on, we need to get dressed. Started. You going down. And then the next show we had was like, um, we had, that was the one where Red fought Wolfgang. They fought the show before. Like they fought on that uh, show I was just talking about serious assault. Um, but they also fought on the next show, which was the very last show I'd run, called Resurrection, where Drew dropped the belt because he was going to WWE. He was meant to be fighting Sheamus. They both got signed. Drew still honoured the booking and came and uh, dropped the belt uh, in a five-way match to dark side. But earlier in the night, there was a match where they had a trolley. So like, Wolfgang had stole a trolley. So they we would a trolley along the staircase and down the stairs into Merry Hill Road, across Merry Hill Road. The crowd was going nuts. Not a big crowd, but Who's there is going apeshit. Into the side of cost cutter. The guy that runs cost cutter runs out, he's going bananas. Um, and that was like the first ever sort of time we've entered street, which has become kind of a staple ICW. That got a lot of attention, but then I just didn't have any money. It wasn't even making money. It was like, this isn't even making any sense. And it didn't seem right, it didn't seem to click. I just couldn't put my finger on it, and I was like, but I, I didn't think, I didn't ever think, oh, I'm not going to ever do this again. I just thought, this isn't working the new. Um, so that's when I went, right, fuck this. And plus, it was, it was losing money. It was, I'd lost a cut of, cut of grand by then. So I was like, I can't. I'm only 19 or 20 or whatever age I was. I'm not losing this amount of money at yeah, wrestling shows, you know what I mean? I'd rather lose this money getting wrecked and go to parties and meet lassies and all that sort of stuff. So that's what I did. Me and my mate, Roy, my mate Ingles, we all got a sort of student house. Intentionally, I wasn't even a student. I was working for my, with my dad, right? So I was just like, we get a student house. Um, they left uni, took all their student lo uh, loan money. So we were loaded, right, for about six months. And we went out every night and partied. Every six, six nights a week we'd go and party. The seventh night we'd have a rave in our house. I'd never miss work though. And there'd be times where I'd wake up, like I'd be sleeping at five in the morning, I'd maybe get up at seven. I'd wake up, hear a thumping noise, open my bedroom door. There's a fucking rave in my hall, uh, strobe lights and all that, and I don't know anybody at this rave. Do you know what I mean? This is my own house. And I'm in working tours, so I'm like, shut the door, I'll pick up the couch that was in my room and just put it across the door. <laughs> uh, it'll be fine. Um, as, long, as long as you can get in my room, I was like, fuck it. Look at Alan Brogan. I'm just about to go for my shirt, but I heard what you had to say, and I had to say a few words for the DVD fans out there. Yes, you are going to have to start at the bottom. And yes, you are going to have to climb your way to the top again. And do I feel sorry for you? No, one bit. You're the man that hit me in the back with a dodo. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're feeling as fine as not or something? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, like, so there's this little niggling? Well, what would you think you know, when you suddenly went, I think I'm going to go, I'm going to start looking at the rest it of it. Did you know what it was? It was Jester front me, that's what it was. So I'm sitting there, and Jester front me. And I'd never really talked to Jester. I appealed in the fourth show I'd run. And he was mates with Drew. I didn't really know him. I'd only met him at that one show. So then when he phoned me, it was really weird. Like, for one, how the fuck did he get my phone number? So right, he's like, uh, all right, mate, uh, I've got this idea for a gimmick, but nobody will do it, because it's a bit dark. So like, would you maybe do it? I'm like, what's the ideas I'm with this mate? Storm and it's called Lolly. She wants to do this sort of, like, 
she keep vomiting in her horn and shoving the guy's face and just really morbid, like really cool stuff, right? While like he'd wrestle them and put a noose around their neck and drag them around the building and ass. I was like, that's fucking awesome. That's right down my street. That's exactly the sort of shit that would fit in ICW. And then right when Mom hit ICW, right? Okay. So I went, well, I don't do that anymore, mate. And he went, just think about it. And that was, we left it. So that night, I'm kind of looking out the window, and because we're so high up, you can see the whole of Glasgow City Centre. It's like a Friday night, and I used to be out partying. It's not long after that, and I'm still dead young. I'm just sitting there like that. Like, this can't be like, I've done all my partying, I've done all my, like, achievements, and that, in my, like, in my career. Like, I'm just going to have a job now. It's like, nah, fuck this. So it's like, I need to do something. I was like, I could, I could at least do that. And I went, I could make that wee company good enough that it would always run that wee tiny building. The building that's in this same building, but next door. That's the, when we came back, that's where we ran. Um, I could make this a really, really fun show with backstage segments and us, And I could film it on a camera and I could put it on a computer and fucking put it on YouTube. Because YouTube is just coming about. And I was like, ah, it's going to be so big, man. I wish I had money, man. I'd invested money in it then. And um, I was like, that's what I want to do. I want it to be on YouTube. Um, and it'll build for there. And then you can, the difference between me and every other British company would be, they would just do the one night storyline. The guy comes out, boo, yay, and have a fucking match. Mm. Or like uh, the really advanced version would be, they'd have, they'd have a story at the start of the night, and it'd finish at the end of the night. Mm. Then the other problem is you'd guys like FWA and all that, who were trying to branch out for that. But what they were doing was having a storyline. And they were doing it in like Cleethorps and in some other place. How <laughs> the fuck did they two crowds know what these two guys are doing? So they were doing it, but I didn't think they were doing it right. Yeah. Um, but you know what? Fair fuck to them because they were the biggest at the time. And I even looked at, up to them and watched their tapes and went, I pure like that shit and that's kind of cool. So they were a wee bit of an influence as well. I won't lie at that point. Um, but I just felt like, right, this is the way you do it. If they can follow the whole story, then I'll get them, and then I'll get hooked, and then we can just keep doing our shows.